Buying a new car guide. Buying a car introduction. For car information, go to number 629 or TL162 at your local library. Check the car magazines in the magazine stacks at the library. Chapter 1 Buying a new car. Buying a car 1. Over the years, I've read many articles and books which talked about buying cars. Not one says to buy a new car. They say buy a used, late model one from a dealer that doesn't specialize in that type of car because they want to get rid of it. Most new car dealers also sell slightly used cars of the same model as their new ones. You'll save thousands of dollars buying one of these rather than a new one. Car values depreciate quickly. The best deal is probably buying a two to three year old used car with a service warranty. Do not buy a more expensive car or a bigger one than what you realistically need. Do your research in advance, pick your car in advance then go to negotiate for the best price with the car dealers. Beware that car magazines are in business to promote cars and get a lot of money for ads so don't trust their car ratings tests. Trust only objective tests like those done by Consumer Reports, consumerreports.org. Sell your extra cars. Keep your cars longer. Use a bike or a bus around the city. Buy used instead of new. Don't get stupid options on the car like rust proofing and fabric protection which are supposed to be there already. Don't buy extended service contracts. Ask about their demo cars for a bargain price. Watch out for rip-offs with used cars. Sell your old car privately rather than at the car lot but be wary when placing a classified ads. Criminals sometimes use these ads to find victims they can rob on the pretense that they want to check your car out. If hauling something heavy, make sure your powertrain can handle it. Learn basic maintenance and do it yourself. Buy car parts at discount auto stores or at auto junkyards. Buying a car too. You could either hang on to the car you got now, buy a used car, buy a new car or lease a car. I think the best way to buy a car is to go online and send email offers to local car lots. If you walk onto a car lot, your best bet is to be friendly, bring cash and go Saturday after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The more he likes you, the better the price he'll give you. On a small car lot, there's one guy. On a big car lot, there might be five salespeople. If the one you're with seems rude or not friendly, Tell the manager that you'd like a more helpful salesman. Be straight and specific. If you got a bundle of cash, show him and tell him you got cash for the right car if the price is right. An expert salesperson talks to you pretending to be friendly but he's really sizing you up for what kind of monthly payments can you afford. When he shows you a car that you like, don't show any excitement. Remain nonchalant. When he takes you into the room to talk, if he calls his magager to lower the price, that's a standard bullshit move. For them, it's not the sticker as much as monthly payments. They often screw on them by making mistakes in their favor in the math. If you bring in an old car and get credit as a trade-in, there's evidence to suggest that some car salesmen conveniently forget to credit your trade-in on the contract. It's fail-safe for them. If you catch them, they just act like it was an honest oversight. If they don't get caught, it's pure profit for them. The best thing you can do is make up a contract then tell the guy you're gonna take it home and look it over and come back tomorrow. If he refuses, that's the end of that deal. Go home and do the math or get someone who knows math to calculate out interest costs, etc. I don't trust car salespeople or dealers after the documentary reports I've seen about them. Their job is to hustle. The field attracts sleazos. If it is a new vehicle, the factory window sticker tells you about it. It gives you the predicted gas mileage, lists all of the equipment that comes standard with the vehicle and, in a separate column, the options with the price of each listed. The equipment package is a group of discounted options. At the bottom of the sticker, the asking price is called the MSRP, which stands for Manufacturer's Suggested Retail Price. Most vehicles come in several different equipment option levels designated by a two-letter code such as XL or DX. It's normal to take a test drive. After the drive, ask for a brochure or the website name. 
his face will sink because he wants the sale right now. A good sales guy will get you the brochure. An aggressive guy will knock the price down once, twice even three times, bring out his manager to offer you a better deal and even threaten you that this is the lowest price you can get anywhere. He's already sold hundreds of cars. This is normal business for him. You have the final say. If they pressure you, walk away. You should already know the lowest price you can pay because of previous research on the internet. Just quote him that and ask if he can better it or what incentives can he throw in like factory rebates, factory warranty, dealership service, etc. Cars aren't special. They're just a consumer product. Don't fall in love with any particular. Look for the best deal. Find a trustworthy mechanic. If you want car information, go to number 629 or TL162 at your local library. Check the car magazines in the magazine stacks. For an extensive list of automotive magazines, refer to a periodical directory at the library. Leasing is almost always a worse deal than buying a used car. Buying a car at the car lot. Don't be antagonistic. Be friendly when the sales guy or girl comes up to you. Smile and shake his hand. The more he likes you, the better deal he'll give you. If you go to a lot and nobody comes out to greet you, it could be that they're giving you space or it could be that they're assholes. If you keep looking over at the office and they can see you doing that but still don't come out, leave. Go somewhere else. Tell him what you're looking for as specifically as possible. If he's terse or rude, ask to speak to his sales manager. Tell the manager that you'd like another salesman. He's checking you out to see how motivated you are and how much you can afford by asking you a bunch of seemingly innocuous questions. Just nod, smile, and say harmless things. When he shows you a car that you like, don't get visibly excited. It's just a piece of tin. If it is a new vehicle, look at the factory window sticker which gives you the predicted gas mileage for both highway and city driving, lists all of the equipment that comes standard with the vehicle and then, in a separate column, the options that have been built into the car at the factory with the price of each listed. An equipment package is a group of discounted options. At the bottom of the sticker, the MSRP is the asking price, the manufacturer's suggested retail price. Most vehicles come in several different equipment levels usually designated by a letter code such as DX, SE, or XL. That's why you should do internet research then know exactly what you want before you set foot on the lot. Test drive the car. After the drive, ask the salesman for a brochure. He might go to get it or simply start fast talking you to buy the car. Thank him and start walking away. If he tries to keep you there to offer a great deal, it's part of his routine. He might even get his manager to do a song and dance about how they'll knock a few thousand off. They've done all this before dozens of times or even hundreds of times. This is why I say do your research beforehand. Know what the MSRP is before you ever walk on the lot. As a matter of fact, I say buy the car online. Just find the exact model you want online then email the five car dealerships nearest to where you live selling that model, tell them you'll buy from whoever quotes you the lowest price. Buy a new car one. The first rule in buying anything from a professional salesperson is that you can't scam the scammer. It happened in the movie The Sting but it rarely happens in real life. He is so good that he will have you thinking you're getting a good deal when he's making money off you. I observed an undercover sting on a TV investigative journalist show which painted several car salesmen as con artists but don't paint them all with the same brush. Their job is to sell cars. Go in there being educated about what you want and negotiate because car lots are there for negotiation. It's part of the art of the deal. I don't really believe in buying new cars because they're a rip-off due to very fast depreciation. At the very least, buy a well-maintained, slightly used, almost new car that will save you at least several thousand dollars over buying a new car. Even though the prospect of buying a brand new car is exciting, probably the greatest gift you give yourself be sensible about it. Lots of people get themselves in over their heads by driving a sports car they can't really afford. Be realistic. 
you can drive a practical car that still looks kinda sporty and save loads of money over buying a sports or luxury car. Many people hate the prospect of buying a new car because they don't want to get ripped off and they hate the thought of some fast-talking sleazo taking advantage of them. Many salesmen are wolves in sheep's clothing. They assume you're naive, especially if you're a woman so they'll charge you extra for the car radio that was already included in the base price or charge for undercoating that was already included. If you bring in a trade-in, often they'll conveniently forget to put the value on the contract or nullify it by jacking the price of the car up somehow. Remember, they think you're dumb. Then they'll offer you financing and their calculations will be wrong or they'll make it seem like they're lowering your car payment but what they're really doing is extending the car loan so instead of a 60-month loan, it will be put up to 72 months without the guy telling you directly. The way he words it for you is that you think he lowered the price but he didn't tell you that he added a year of payments onto the loan. If they get caught, they just act like dumb guys who made a mistake in figuring it out. Bring your own calculator. Do the math yourself to get to the total price of the car including the interest if they're financing it. That's what you want, total bottom line cost including the interest rate on the loan, what you'll pay total for the car when all is said and done. I saw these practices on an undercover sting conducted on car salesmen on TV. They have the other trick where they quote you a high price up front then get on the phone acting like they're begging their boss to drop the price by $500 but he's in on it too so they'll make it look good then drop $500 off the inflated price. You think you got a good deal but you really got sucked in. The major rule is know more about the car than the salesman does. The first thing you do is get educated. Go to the library, look through some car magazines. Call the toll-free numbers listed below to get some of them free new vehicle brochures, visit car websites and consider investing $20 in the Consumer Reports, consumerreports.org, information which compares similar vehicles from the different major companies or simply go to the library, find the stack of Consumer Reports magazines and locate the annual new car issue, probably the April issue. You can also call the numbers below and get the factory invoice price of the car you want. The manufacturer's suggested retail price slash MSRP is irrelevant. Anything above factory invoice price is profit so your job is to work from there to get a deal for yourself such that he only ends up with a few hundred dollars profit. A few hundred dollars is better than no sale plus he adds one more to his monthly quota which entitles him to a bonus at the end of the month if he sells enough. There is no cooling off period on new car sales. Once you have signed a contract, you are obligated to buy the car. The factory invoice price of a car is the raw price a dealer pays for it not including bonuses he gets on some models if he sells a lot of them. This is your bargaining tool. Give him $200 to $500 profit over the factory invoice price but never pay more than $500 over it. You can go to car lots, look around and if a salesman approaches, just be cool and non-committal. Go to car shows to look over the new models, see them on the internet or simply refer to the annual car issue Consumer Reports puts out every year in April or May. The factory invoice price is the manufacturer's initial charge to the dealer. This is usually higher than the dealer's final cost because dealers often receive rebates, allowances, discounts and incentive awards. The invoice price always includes freight, also known as destination and delivery. If you are buying a car based on the factory invoice price, for example, at invoice, $100 below invoice 2% above invoice, be sure freight is not added to the sales contract. Base price is the cost of the car without options but includes standard equipment, factory warranty, and freight. This price is printed on the sticker. The sticker price, appears on a label affixed to the car window and is required by federal law. It shows the base price, the manufacturer's installed options with the manufacturer's suggested retail price, the manufacturer's transportation charge and the fuel economy, mileage. The label may not be removed by anyone other than the purchaser. Dealer sticker price, usually on a supplemental sticker, is the sticker price plus the suggested retail price of dealer installed options, such as additional dealer markup, ADM, of additional dealer profit. ADP, dealer preparation, and undercoating. If you check in the newsletter car deals, 
listed below, and see that a certain brand of car has a factory to dealer incentive, you can also use that in your bargaining leverage. Factory to dealer incentives are lump sum payments the manufacturer makes to the salesman for every car sold. They range from $500 to $3,000. Once you're educated and you know exactly what model you want, you have several options. You could call auto brokers or visit their websites and simply buy what amounts to a mail order car just a few hundred dollars over the invoice price. If you go to the lot, don't get all hot and bothered at the sight of a car you want. Buy what you can afford. Don't get taken in by some fantasy and then end up living to make the payments. The experts say that you generally get a better deal on your used car if selling the car privately through an ad in the paper than through a trade but that's a risk because at any given time there are a lot of cars for sale and yours just might not sell. You might buy Edmunds used car prices book or Kelly's blue book to get a fair market value of your used car before you sell it. Another tactic is to sell your used car in a separate deal by going around to a few used car dealers and seeing what they'll offer you. If you go in knowing the factory invoice price and the factory to dealer incentive, you have a bargaining chip to use over a salesman. The next factor to consider is demand of the vehicle. Demand is always highest in spring and early summer and some vehicles are extremely popular which means you'll have less bargaining power than with other vehicles. My favorite approach is simply to buy a car over the internet from the cheapest place, generally the manufacturer. Another approach is to do it all over the phone or simply draft up a letter, send it around to local dealers and the district office telling them what you know, what you want and asking them to make an offer. Tell them you know that the factory invoice price is $XXXXX and that you're taking bids. Say you'll buy the car from the lowest offer, kind of like a reverse auction and that's it. You've negotiated on the phone without stress and you've probably saved the few grand they typically charge over invoice price. If negotiating, negotiate up from the invoice price not down from his offer. As I already said, never pay more than $500 over the invoice price. Salesmen operate on a quota slash bonus system so if you go near the end of the month, they might give you a better deal because they want to get some quota bonus. If you agree on a price verbally, don't let them take it away with sleazy paperwork. Look it all over. Don't buy any extra insurance program the car dealership offers like Credit Life which will ensure your car is paid for if something happens. It's usually cheaper with a regular insurance agent. The best time to buy a car is when business is slow like before Christmas or right after, fall when the dealers are trying to get rid of the current year models for the next year's vehicles but remember that you have to account for a year's depreciation on the resale value even though the car was just sitting there. The worst time to buy a car is spring and early summer when everyone seems to want one. After getting your new car for the best possible price, only then discuss the possibility of a trade-in. First, however, find out the value of your old car. You may want to check the library for references and periodicals that can tell you how much your car is worth. This information may help you get a better overall price from the dealer. Though it may take longer you generally will get more money by selling the car yourself. Service contracts that you may buy with a new car provide for the repair of certain specified parts or problems. These contracts are offered by manufacturers, dealers, or independent companies and usually initially run concurrently with the manufacturer's warranty. A warranty is included in the price of the car, a service contract costs extra. Before deciding to purchase a service contract, read it carefully and consider it well since the experts say they're usually a waste of money. The general consensus is that new cars depreciate too fast to be worth it. A good used car is a much better deal. The opinions are mixed as to whether you get a better deal at a used car lot or through a private sale from an ad in the paper. Either way, always haggle over the price and get the vehicle checked out by someone who knows what's going on first. When you get set on a certain vehicle, Check to see if it has a clone which means a similar vehicle with a different name that sells for less. These vehicles supposedly have different features like different braking systems, different power in the engine, different options, etc. When you read a new car ad, read everything, especially the fine print. Often sales in ads are a bait and switch technique. 
They get you in the door with the ad then once you're there, they say the car in the ad is a piece of junk but they've got a better car for only $2,000 more. Buy a new car too. Salesmen are true pros, they take courses from master sleazos on how to sell cars and they've probably sold a thousand before you came along so your best bet is to go in knowing what kind of deal you want and regardless of what he says, keep repeating it over and over again. You've got the power to walk away to go to another dealer. An easy way is to call three to five dealers in your area, either talk to the salesman or fax them a letter telling them exactly what you want like a blue Land Rover with sunroof and four-wheel drive. Tell him you know the invoice price is $XXXX, you're getting estimates from four dealers and you'll pick the lowest one so ask for his rock bottom price up front and that's it, an easy way to negotiate. Tell them you know what the manufacturer's rebate is, if applicable. Keep an eye out in the ads for rebate deals which can be pretty good. Beware of all add-ons and read your sales agreement over before you sign it. Sometimes they add a substantial fee for doing the paperwork. Question all strange-looking itemized charges. All manufacturers rust-proof new cars and offer a 36-month guarantee on the service. Don't be duped into paying for this as an extra service for your new car. In fact, don't ever get this service because a study conducted by the New York Attorney's Office several years ago found that over 90% of these rust-proofing jobs were inadequate and some not even done at all. Go to buy a car at night near the end of the month when they're tired then you can haggle with the buzzard. Watch out for so-called options which should be standard like a stereo system, etc. Watch out for the hard sell on the extended warranty option. Your ordinary warranty is good enough. You don't need the upholstery scotch guard protection option. Sometimes they'll add the cost of a few options into the price of the car even if you didn't order them. Diesel engines save on fuel costs but the vehicles generally cost more and it's harder to find diesel than gas. Somebody said the best day to shop for a car is December 31st because it's the end of the year plus almost nobody will be shopping for a car on that date. Salesmen are more tired at the end of the day so that could be the best time to go and make a quick deal. Don't discuss financing until you make the deal. Your best financing is probably your local bank not through the car dealer. Question any extras on the dealer tag or the invoice. Don't buy any auto service extended warranty contracts because you're already covered by the manufacturer. If you do buy an extended warranty contract, make sure it's all in writing not just verbal promises. You should sell your used car yourself independent of the new car deal but if you go for a trade-in, at least know the blue book value of your car so you'll have a bargaining chip. Money Magazine has an issue every year around March where they write up the dealer prices of 500 new vehicle models. Best Options for Resale Value The best options in terms of resale value are Airbags Air Conditioning All-Wheel Drive Anti-Lock Brakes Automatic Transmission Power Steering Power Windows Stereo Sunroof What do you want in a car? Factors to consider are 4. Wheel Drive Airbags Air conditioning. Alarm system. Anti-lock brakes. Auto slash standard transmission. Base price. Color. Dealer slash owner. Make and model. Miles per gallon. Power locks. Power steering. Power windows. Roof rack. Stereo. Sunroof. Warranty. Miles slash time. Top Vehicles Rated by Customer Satisfaction The top vehicles rated by customers for satisfaction are Acura Audi Cadillac Honda Infiniti Lexus Mercedes Saturn Toyota Volvo Most Stolen Vehicles Acura Legend BMW 300 Series Convertible Lexus GS300 Mercedes S-Class Mitsubishi Montero 4WD Nissan 300ZX Toyota Land Cruiser State Sales Tax on a Car When you buy a new or used car, you have to pay state sales tax on it. 
This could be a lot of money. Some low sales tax states are Alabama, Delaware, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, New Mexico, and North Dakota. Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon have no state sales tax. Taxinfocenter.com slash state sales tax. Extended warranties info. Extended warranties are a waste of money because your normal warranty should cover most things but if you plan to buy one, it's often cheaper to buy an extended warranty from a company other than the company you buy a new car from. Extended car warranty websites. Autowarranty.com. Agapotowarranties.com. Autoservicewarranty.com. Autowarrantyquote.com. CaliforniaWarrantyquote.com slash car underscore care dot php. CertifiedCarCare.com. WarrantyInfo.com. How to buy an extended warranty. WarrantyKing.com